Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to one of my favourite people and a legend. Bill Medley, how are you? I am absolutely wonderful. Having a great time. I've just seen you live here at Haro's in Las Vegas, and we spoke last October when you were coming to UK to do this huge tour. And here we are in a showroom, sold out, these people loving you, and you've never sounded better. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, yeah, I've been blessed. Well, I, you know, the truth is people say, boy, you sound just like you did and when you were a kid. The reason is, is I'm 75 but I, when I was 25, I sounded like I was 75. <laughs> but now I'm having a ball. I'm having a great time and being with my, you know, new partner, Bucky Hurd. And he's just such a good, strong singer that it just makes it a lot of fun. There's three things that impress me about this show. Uh, Bucky's voice is sensational. He is wonderful. And that high register, it's sort of BG-esque at times and incredible. There's your voice, which is really the antithesis of that. At the bottom, your range is just so incredible. And that bass you have is fantastic. But your personality is what made the show so wonderful and was such a big surprise. Because when I've seen you in the past, it's been you as part of someone else's show. This is you being a personality. And it's wonderful. It's so funny and warm. Well, you know, uh, yeah, I just got started doing that years ago. Uh, actually, the Righteous Brothers did a lot of humor. And uh, we, uh, because we did so many, you know, You've Lost It, Love and Feeling, Unchained, all these sad big songs that we kind of tried to break it up. And so, yeah, I, I just try and, you know, uh, get get my personality out there a little bit. You know. I guess it's a little bit uh, bittersweet in a sense that your best friend, your singing partner, isn't in the show. Uh, but there's a most beautiful moment where you sing Unchained Melody and we get to see you just with a pin focus, sat quietly singing that tremendous song. And I don't think it's ever been sung with more heart. It can't be easy for you getting through that. No, it's not easy because they, they show the video and it's a lot of pictures of us, Bob, a lot of pictures of Bob and... Uh, yeah, you know, it never, it never gets, it's never gone, you know, and uh, and I don't want it to be gone. I, I want to, I want it, I want it to be emotional for me. I started this interview by saying the legend, and you are. Does it ever become normal when you switch on the radio on this station and that song's being playing, and then on another station a different song's being played? Because across the generations with that revival in the 80s, you've got people who are now in their 80s who love you, but people in their 30s who adore you too. Yeah, you know, that uh, having those, having the radio jump back in on, you know, the Top Gun with love and feeling, Dirty Dancing, uh, time of my life and ghosts uh, with Unchained Melody just made us right back. And, um, you know, we've we just had a blessed career. And I still I still feel that, you know, I'm just so blessed. I, I'm so blessed to be here working, having a great time singing song, singing songs that I recorded when I was 25. And um, you know, life could not be better. And my daughter's on stage with me. She sings time in my life with me. And, you know, life just couldn't be better. That moment was a surprise. Firstly, because I didn't know she was in the show. Secondly, I didn't know she was your daughter. And there's that awkward moment where you pull her back from the other singers and you say, oh, well, come and stand with me. And you think, oh, this could be creepy. And then you realize this is your daughter. A, she's beautiful. B, she has a beautiful voice. And C, she nails that song. Because that could be awkward if it was some sort of token gesture. Oh, yeah, no, it would be, uh, <laughs> it would be sick, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Uh, but and I, and I do that on purpose. I stop her because I know they're thinking, wow, What's what? And that when I say she's my daughter, they go, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and what a wonderful talent she is, too. I guess for you as a father, there's no greater thrill than standing next to her on a stage and singing that song particularly. Yeah, you know, and it's really funny because I almost didn't record it because she was being born at the time. And my, I promised my wife I'd be there for the birth. And now to be standing on stage with her married and and singing time of my life with me, it is the time of my life. I mean, it's to be able to be around your children all the time, can't beat it. And at 75, for you to have this theater sold out here in the center strip of Las Vegas is a huge testament to your popularity and success. We look across the street, Celine Dion, Elton John, Rod Stewart, you're up there with the best. Is this even surprising to you that people still care? 
Well, yeah, it, it's always surprising. I, like I say, you know, a curtain goes up, and I don't know if anybody's going to be there. <laughs> but uh, thank God they are, and it, it's, um, you know, it is surprising and it isn't surprising. You know, when you're so busy doing your job, you don't really realize what's wrapped all around all that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like when we're having hit records and, and, and all that, and people say, man, how great is it? How does it feel to be have these hits? So, man, you know, I haven't even had time to think about it. I've been out there working it. And, and not until the, the 80s, late 80s and 90s, uh, when we got a real chance to spend time with the audience and and what our music meant to them and this and that and that's when we learned, oh man, this is this is cool. Is there a recipe to it? I mean, Unchained Melody over here and then that loving feeling over there. They're very different songs, but equally as beautiful and as loved as you proved tonight. Firstly, they sound great live. Is that partly to do with it? The horn section was sensational this evening. Aren't they great? The horn section makes it worthwhile going on stage. That band is a mind blower. I mean, you heard the guitar player in the blues. This will be the last time. They're just, they're just phenomenal. And uh, no, Unchained Melody actually was kind of a mistake. It was the B side of a song that Phil Spector produced called "Hung on You," but the disc jockeys just flipped it over, and there was Unchained Melody, and it just became a hit. So it was an accident, a good accident, but an accident. Frankie Valley once said that he wouldn't make it until he'd got the horn section, so you must have made it. it. It is true. You don't get that much in Vegas anymore. In the old showrooms, you did. To have that here, that sound is so sensational, and they make you sound great. It does matter, doesn't it? It matters a great deal, you know, um, because there's so much energy coming off that stage. Those horns just blow you right off the stage in the rhythm section. and So that's what makes it magical, you know, that all that air that's going out into the audience and and um so yeah thank god i mean that bobby and i started out with the horn section and when i was uh, offered this job i said well i'm not doing it without a horn section so thank god they said okay and I thought it was very classy the way you opened the show by tipping your hat to Bobby and saying this is for you and about you because it would be easy to ignore that. You embrace that within the show and I think that's important. Well, yeah, you know, um, you certainly want to get the elephant out of the room. There's, there's obviously Bucky isn't Bobby Hatfield and, and, and we don't even want to try and disguise it. I mean... Bobby Hatfield, the Righteous Brothers of Bill Medley and Bobby Hatfield can't replace Bobby. Uh, all Bucky can do is is fill in for him, and, he, and he's doing a, a sensational job. One of my favorite moments in the show, as well as your greatest hits, which of course we get to hear from beginning to end, was that beautiful gospel number you did where the band came forward and just sang with you a cappella. Sensational bit of staging and theater as well, um, proving that you've all got such unique and amazing voices. Yours at the bottom though, again, so rich and so powerful. What does that take now of you as we sit here after the show? Oh, you know, when, when I walk off, I'm, I'm pretty pooped for about five minutes and then I'm then I'm just back you know <laughs> I'm back let's do it again uh, I I don't know man I just I, I'm 75 and here's the great thing and this is the truth uh, you, you come to work and you get in your clothes and you start gearing up to be one of the righteous brothers and you start and by the time I go on stage the 25-year-old Bill Medley goes on stage and I leave the 75-year-old guy in the dressing room. And that's the truth. And the audience, the, people say, how can, how, do you, how can you keep singing Love and Feeling and all those songs all these years? I said, because the minute you go, you never close your... The minute you do it and people start hugging and this and that, it's just a, it's a, it's a turn on. It just takes you right back to 25. And I, I, I truly think... That's why people in this industry last so long if they really love it, you know, and take decent care of themselves. They'll do it until they come get you with a shotgun. 
And here's what I'd like to say to anybody in this town or anywhere around the world that wants to be a performer or a singer. Come and see you do what you do, aside from the music, the way you handled the crowd and the band and the band leader and the drummer and your warmth on stage is so magnetic and brilliant. You are really the epitome of a Vegas headlining star and you so deserve to be here. It was a thrill seeing you. Well, thank you uh, very much. Thrill seeing you. I hope to get back over there you must you came last year did you have fun when you came to you know i had a ball and and the great thing was all i had to do is go oh my love and the whole audience would (laughs) sing the song i didn't even have to be there you know and they sang the whole songs love and feeling they sang and uh, but it was great and there was wonderful people on on the show and unfortunately david guest just passed away and it was uh he promoted it was his show and uh uh, I just had a ball. I, I love it, love it there, and I want to get Bucky and get over there as the Righteous Brothers, and I think it would be a lot of fun. Well, I could honestly say I've seen about 50-plus shows in my three and a half weeks I've been here, and this is one of my favorites. You are a star, and you're a gentleman, and I loved it. Thank you very much for talking to me. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. You can see the Righteous Brothers here at Harris in Las Vegas, uh, playing throughout the week, Wednesday uh, through Saturday, and throughout the year now, signed until December. Congratulations. Thank you. Got a job.